Circus, the show of shows. <laughs> The suspicion that Armoured Bay is the saboteur planted from the outfit by Luigi Mansella to prevent the circus opening in Brisbane is crystallised by the sudden disappearance of this man. Christine, spending a day in the mountains with her fiancé, Tony Walton-Smith, learns of this when she returns to the hotel, for John Hagen, in an attempt to face Armoured Bay with a charge of treachery, goes to the man's residential to find every trace of the artist vanished completely. Late that same Monday night, as Christine is talking with Gail, Dr. Playford comes to the girl's room to say that a young woman came knocking on his door in a state of extreme terror. Playford tells them that the girl calls herself Stella Ricardo and that she met the good doctor in the house of Armoured Bay. Armoured Bay? Only then she was supposedly sleeping in a glass coffin and calling herself the Princess Zenobia. Doctor, but surely this is some joke. You wouldn't think that if you could see the poor child. I've never seen anyone quite so scared. But, well, this girl... It's she... the same girl, right enough. I only had to take one look at her to see that. But what's she doing here and at this hour of the night? That's what I mean to find out. But the child is so shaken, I thought the presence of another woman might help. That's why I came along to you, Chris. What's all the disturbance in here? Dad. I can hear you halfway down the passage. Next thing you'll have the management complaining. Chris, explain to your father. I'm going back to that girl. Girl? What girl? The girl in Dr. Playford's room, Dad. A girl in Edgar's room? At this time of the night? For heaven's sake, what's going on here? Dad, relax. The deuce is Edgar thinking about? Is he taking complete leave of his senses? Dad, will you listen? Dr. Playford says this girl is the Princess Zenobia. Only she's not the Princess Zenobia at all. Her real name is Stella Ricardo. And she came beating on the doctor's door about ten minutes ago in a state of complete panic. Mm, are you all complete? Completely off your heads? We're only repeating what Dr. Playford told us, Dad. Oh, come on. Dad! We're going down to Edgar's room. It's either softening of the brain or delirium treatments. In any case, we should be there, so come on. All the confounded nonsense. And at this hour of the night, no wonder circus folk get such a bad reputation. But, Dad, Dr. Keep your but... voice down, Gail. Don't you think anyone wants to sleep in this hotel? I was only going to say that... Dr. Playford wouldn't make up a story like this. I shouldn't be at all surprised if the old rascal's been drinking. Well, we'll soon know. Here we are. Come in. Quiet now. Let's get her off to sleep. And across to the bed. Doctor, she's little more than a child. So... You weren't just fooling, Edgar. Hmm? Of course he wasn't dead. And this is the same girl. I recognize her from my photographs. But what on earth is she doing here? We'll have to wait until morning to find out about that. But, Edgar... I persuaded this child to take a sedative. And I'm not going to let you wake her up now. In the morning she'll be a different person. And I've forgotten this obsession about someone wanting to kill her. Kill her? Oh. What's all this, Edgar? I'm telling you a simple fact, John. I was on the point of getting to bed when I heard the sound of running footsteps outside in the passage. Then someone came beating at my door. Yes, but surely... I opened the door and this child almost fell into the room. I've read about people's faces being a mask of terror, but this was the first time I'd seen it. This girl clung to me, saying the wildest things. What things? She kept saying, they're after me. They're going to kill me. Don't let them find me. And then she'd say, they've killed my brother. Now they're trying to find me. Oh, come now, Edgar. I'm telling you. You're telling us something that reads like a page out of a cheap thriller. You don't honestly expect us to believe that things like this happen in real life. All right. All right. I made the whole thing up. Now, Doctor. Well... This girl told you she was the Princess Zenobia? Naturally, after I'd recovered from the shock of being sprung upon by a strange woman, I asked who she was. She told me. And then I took a closer look at her face. I realized she was telling the truth. Yes, but why come to you? Because she'd only knew four people in the Hagens. Dave and Jim, who saw her the first time. And Winnie and myself. Probably my being a doctor. And the only one with any common sense in this outfit. She asked for me downstairs. Hmm. 
I still can't understand. I say, uh, Robin. What's all the commotion going on in here? Is the hotel burning down? Gosh. What's the matter? Is that the real girl or the wax dummy? Dummy? Why, uh, what are you talking about? That night I went to Armored Base. Robin, you can remember? Yes. Yes, seeing her lying there, it's brought it all back. I was looking through a chink in the blind. No, no, uh, not but, here, Robin. Uh, Dad, now it's all so clear. You'd better come back to my room. You can tell me the whole story there. You girls had better come along, too. We certainly mean to, don't we, Chris? Can you leave this girl alone, Edgar? She won't know a single thing until the morning. All right. We'll all meet in my room in five minutes' time. At least we'll get some of this mystery cleared up by tonight. Oh, Edgar. We're we'll waiting for you. Uh, close the door. All right, Robin. Now start at the beginning. Gosh, but it's a funny feeling. Just as soon as I set eyes on that girl, the whole thing was there, plain in my mind. All right. Now, you left the hotel that night. Yes. I didn't mention about going to anyone because I thought you'd laugh at me. I thought I might get a look at this girl, perhaps even talk to her. How did you plan to do it? I didn't have any particular scheme, Chris. I thought I might just walk up to the house and ask to see her. <laughs> the eternal optimism of youth. Anyhow, when I got there, the place was in absolute darkness. Not a light anywhere. First I thought I'd come to the wrong house, but it was the right address, all right. So I started up that path through the garden. Yes? I waited outside the door for a few minutes, but there wasn't a sound anywhere. Then I started to prowl around, and I noticed that from one of the windows, there was a thin slit of light showing. I made for it. Then I saw that a, a thick blind had been pulled down over the window, but not quite far enough. And that was how the chink of light was showing. And so you peeped through? Yes. Well, go on. Uh, the room inside was very brightly lit. I could see every detail. There was that glass coffin standing on the trestles. And inside it lay this girl. And then something happened that almost took my breath away. Well? As I watched, that girl moved. She sat up, climbed out of the coffin and stretched and yawned. Then, of all the things, she walked round the room and lit a cigarette. Then, then she crossed to that coffin and touched something at one side and upshot what I first took to be a second girl. The wax dummy. How do you know, Edgar? I'll tell you in a moment. Go on, Rob. Well, in that clear light, it only took a second glance to see that this was a wax figure, the exact replica of the girl. And it must have been permanently concealed in a false bottom in that coffin. Then, all at once, I heard a movement behind me. And as I turned, something very bright flashed into my eyes, blinding me. Hmm, sounds as though someone flashed a torch in your face. Oh, what happened after that isn't very clear, Dad. I remember struggling and crying out. And then it... Then it gets all sort of vague. The next thing I remember is someone shaking me. And it was Mr. Douglas bending over me. And Dad... That's all. Well, of all the extraordinary things. Robin, if anyone but you had told me this, I'd say they were raving. It's true, all right. Particularly about that wax dummy. Now, don't tell me that you've seen it, too. No, John, I didn't. But Winnie Nelson did. Not only saw it, but actually touched it. It gave her the fright of her life. When was this, Doctor? On Saturday night, when Winnie and I found that button. Armored Bay took us into that room and showed us the living girl, presumably asleep. But Winnie wasn't satisfied. Sometime later, she sneaked back. Into, into that room? Yeah. And meanwhile, I guess the dummy had been substituted for the real girl. And Winnie, Winnie touched it. And gave her a dreadful shock. She thought the girl was dead. She let out a whooping scream. Armored Bay realized at once what had happened. As we rushed back into that room, he pretended to accidentally knock over the nightlight, plunging the room into darkness. Oh? Why? So the girl could uh, take the place of the dummy. When we got that light going again, she was apparently sleeping. 
just as we left her. <laughs> Must have given Bay a few very bad moments. And I do see anything to laugh at, Edgar. I'm beginning to wonder if I'm standing on my head and my heels. Yeah, you'll feel better in the morning, John. After a good night's sleep. The whole thing will make sense to you. Why should it? Because we'll get that girl's story. And that should fill in the blank spaces. Oh, by the way, John, you'll have to put me up in your room tonight. <laughs> but I warn you, I'm rather inclined to snore. <laughs> Once again, the Hagen family find themselves enmeshed in a net of mystery and intrigue. Learn the story of Stella Ricardo, told in the next episode of Hagen Circus, written by Max Haven.